right third row. Hey, Coach. Kennedy Wright with CBS 42. If you could um, tell me some of the differences between Nico and um, the former quarterback from last season, that would be helpful. Nico and Joe? Yes, Joe. And, um, you know, there's uh, a lot of similarities in their ability to, to spray the, the football around the, the football field and, and, uh, and be accurate with it. Um, you know, I'm really excited about Nico, his ability to process information uh, in the middle of the football field, bodies in motion uh, after, you know, coverage recognition. Um, and, uh, you know, his ability to extend and make plays outside of the pocket. Um, he's refined his movement in the pocket so that when he can, he can distribute the ball from there, uh, but uh, also break contain and, and uh, go make plays. Right side. Josh is that client with Channel 2 in Atlanta. Um, the use of iPads now being able on the sidelines. Uh, Kirby said the problem he'll have is a lot of coaches are technically challenged on his staff. Uh, how do you think that will help you? Uh, maybe too much information overload. How do you take advantage of this new opportunity? Yeah, uh, well, it's going to give you the ability to go back and, and tangibly see everything that, that happened. It takes away some of the artistry of uh, having to put the pieces of the puzzle together without being able to watch it uh, in between drives or from, from dr uh, play to play. But uh, it'll be a great tool for your players too, um, you know, to to see something and uh, help them make adjustments before they get to the next draft. Right here in the front row, Josh Eric Bailey with Tulsa World. Yeah. Your first year through the SEC. What did you learn as a head coach, and what do you think Oklahoma's program will learn their first year going through this, the the league? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people from my past today, so uh, great to see everybody. Um, what was your question? I'm sorry. <laughs> When you went through your, the SEC the first year as a head coach, what did you learn, and what do you expect Oklahoma to learn their first year going through the SEC? Yeah, the, the difference in this league is why you want to be in this league. Um, top to bottom, it's got best coaches, best rosters, talent level. <clears throat> road games are real road games every Saturday in every venue. Um, you know, and you can look at the NFL draft, you know, how that's unfolded by conference. You can look at all the statistics. Uh, that's why you want to be in the league. And, and so um, you got to be ready uh, every single Saturday. Uh, it's the depth of the league. In the aisle here on the left. Hey, Josh. John Sokoloff with uh, WCBI TV. Obviously, Jeff Levy was on your staff for a couple of years yeah. now, and now he's the head coach at Mississippi State, his first head coaching job. I was just curious, what do you think of him? Uh, while he was on your staff, and how ready do you think he is to be a head coach in the SEC? Yeah, I'm excited for Jeff, his family. Um, highly competitive. I've known Jeff uh, a long time. He was a student assistant when I was GA in at uh, at Oklahoma after he had uh, injury and, and couldn't play anymore. So, knowing him a long time, he's smart. He's competitive. Um, he's been inside this league, um, and uh, um, he'll do a nice job down there. Right side, third row. Derek Peterson, Saturday Down South. You obviously have a shared history with Brent Venables. Um, yeah. Can you just speak to the relationship that you have with him and how the dynamic might change now that he's coaching against you in the, in the conference? Yeah, I'm not going to like him as much when I'm coaching against him. All right. Uh, now, Brent, uh, um, like as a player, um, I thought he was one of the, the cornerstone pieces um, on the staff, uh, and that's from a player's perspective of um, – you know, helping us get to to where we got. He, his consistency, his competitive drive, um, were, were things that you notice as a player. You get in the staff room with him, uh, you see that same um, same energy and same focus from him, and got great respect for him and and what he's done throughout his entire career. Uh, that's every stop that he's been at, and uh, you know, obviously what he's doing at Oklahoma now. This side, and then pass it to your left. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Have, have you um, kind of thought about what kind of emotions um, it'll be for you going back to Norman, and then what will you be able to tell your players to prepare them for that specific road trip? Yeah, um, it'll be unique, my viewpoint that day, um, just seeing the stadium from a different perspective. Uh, and I just say that simply uh, changes sidelines. Um, at the end of the day, that Saturday in September, I think, maybe early October, um, you know, I mean, it's about uh, Tennessee and, and Oklahoma and, uh, you know, this year's team. So, um, you know, go prepare the same way, 
um, that you do, do it fiercely and be ready to strap it on and go play. Right side, fifth row, then pass it forward one. Hey, Coach, Ben Bobick, local three in Chattanooga. Boo Carter is a, a big-time recruit that you guys had, had come in here in the, in, at the beginning of the year. Um, you hear a lot of people toss around the term it factor. I feel like Boo is one of those guys that has that it factor. What is it about him that makes him special, and do you foresee him uh, contributing on the, on the field this fall? Yeah, uh, Boo's been, uh, been really good inside of our, our program. He's really grown uh, off the field. And uh, because of that, it's grown inside of our, our program, too. Um, he's a dynamic playmaker, and you can see that, you know, from his high school footage as, you know, offense, returner, defensive playmaker. Uh, we were fortunate to spend a lot of time with him in different camps and, and get around him. Uh, his competitive composure on game day, I got a chance to go see him play. It was, it was striking uh, to me, just watching everything unfold and his ability to communicate. Um, you know, after a play on the sidelines with his coaches, players. And, um, you know, I'm excited about his growth and, and mastering the position within the fundamentals and technique and our scheme as we go through tra training camp. But I uh, expect Boo to have a great fall. Left side. Coach, Carter Yates with Dave Campbell's Texas football. With Texas and Oklahoma being added to the SEC, obviously there's two Texas universities in the state. Now, does that change at all for y'all, the geographic area you're recruiting? Now, um, you know, for, for us, um, we have a national brand. We've recruited nationally. Uh, we have multiple kids that uh, are from the state of Texas that uh, are with us, and, and uh, we'll continue to recruit it. Right side. Hey, Josh. Uh, Trey Wallace. The, the kind of relationship that you have with with Danny White, Donnie Plowman, we're seeing a lot of universities around the country put a halt on certain things when it comes to constructions and, and stadiums yeah. and, and, and projects. Tennessee's kind of going forward with this and with, with Neyland Stadium, the baseball renovations, the athletic facility. Uh, what does that say about the progress you guys have made as a university over the last number of years and the commitment that they have uh, to you as the football coach, the baseball coach, Rick Barnes, and so on? Yeah, if, if you don't have alignment in your leadership, it's really hard to, to keep pushing forward. And we have that at the University of Tennessee, um, from, from Danny to Chancellor Plowman to – to Randy Boyd, um, dynamic people. Uh, they're like-minded. They're highly competitive. They're energetic, but they're visionary. Uh, they find ways to solve problems. Don't complain about problems. Um, you know, for us on the athletic side, uh, you look at the the changes that they're making to to Neyland Stadium, uh, to our baseball stadium. Uh, revenue sources that are revenue sources for you know game day in Neyland, but are going to be revenue sources 365 days out of the year. Um, it's just unique to have people in leadership um, at all levels within your university that give you the opportunity to continue to grow at the rate that that we are. It's a, I don't know if there's ever been a better time to be on Rocky Top. Back row, then pass it forward to your left. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Coach, uh, how do you decide uh, how much of your roster should, should be built up through the transfer portal versus the emphasis on, on recruiting players directly out of high school? Yeah, um, for us, uh, the, the portal is a way to, uh, to patch uh, needs that you have within the landscape of, of your roster. Um, I think high school recruiting, the development uh, of the player uh, within your scheme, in the weight room, but also the leadership that you have to have from within your, your program. <clears throat> I don't think you can ever, um, you know, hurt yourself as far as, you know, where you want to continue to grow in your program, not just in this immediate year, but years down the road. And, um, you know, we've been in a unique space when I got there. You know, I think we were at 65 scholarship players uh, our, our first fall. Um, there are reductions that we've had to take. We've had to be smart um, in how we continue to build our, our roster. You know, I talked about our wide receivers being the deepest, you know, the, the position group being the deepest that it's been. Some of that was because that's just the way it was, but some of it was also decisions that we had to make as, as a staff and, and uh, you know, uh, feel like, you know, our roster is the deepest that it's been. Um, and uh, really excited about, you know, how we can continue to grow and, and push forward. Left side on the aisle. 
Coach right here on the aisle, ESPN 106.7 and Auburn Jacob Goins. You are taking a, an intriguing road trip in week two to NC State. What does that game mean for, for you and your team and the trajectory of this season going on the road to a, to a, a different place in week two? Yeah, it'll be uh, uh, the biggest game on our schedule that week. Um, huge game. Um, you look at uh, the quality of the opponent. Uh, Coach Dorn's done a, a, a really nice job over there um, building that uh, that program, uh, consistency that he's had. But uh, for us, uh, the Carolinas have been a really fertile recruiting ground. And uh, for us, uh, that'll be an opportunity to, to go to some of our recruits and, and play in front of them. Right side of the aisle, then pass it back one chair. TJ Krillich, National Football Foundation. Congratulations, Coach, on uh, making the 2025 ballot for the College Football Hall of Fame. Coach, I just want to ask you, how does it feel to be on such a prestigious list like that? Yeah, I'd feel better if I got in, but, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, what the, the Football Foundation recognizes and, and what they do within the landscape of, of football in general, I think is really important. And then, uh, to have an opportunity to be recognized in that way, um, you know, with a, a lot of other great players, is uh, it's an honor. On the aisle, James Hale from OKC Sports Radio 105.3 HD1 in Oklahoma City. Josh, uh, I heard that you were able to go back uh, at when Roy was inducted at that at the party that he was yeah. at. Was that the first time you had a chance to be around the guy since you'd become a head coach? And I was just curious what you thought about that event. And, um, you guys know the pace of uh, of this job has only uh, continued to get faster and faster with uh, less downtime. So, um, you know, I hadn't had an opportunity to, to be around many of them all at one time. I think that was the first time uh, that I got a chance to be around a big group of, of guys. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I uh, wanted to be there and see Roy recognize a great player, great person. And uh, all the teammates that uh, that were able to be back there, there were a bunch of them, and, and uh, coaches and administration too. There's uh, a lot of people I got a chance to run into for the first time in a long time. Final two questions here on the second row, then we'll go to the fourth. Josh, obviously your history at Oklahoma. I actually got a fun throwback photo of you and Josh Norman today. Yeah. I mean, your connection with that program and those people, your departure did not go like you wanted, I'm sure. Um, just your feelings, how have they evolved over time um, since you left there? And does having, you, as you mentioned, so many guys that you played with or played for now on the staff, how has that maybe evolved how you're, you're feeling about Oklahoma? I don't think my feelings necessarily have, uh, have really evolved. Um, I got great respect and admiration um, for the university, the leadership that's been there. Um, man, unique time going there as, as a player and what we were able to accomplish. Um, great teammates, great coaches, a lot of friends. Um, you know, so I've always had uh, – Great admiration for for the people inside of that state, um, and uh, for me, I'm not at Tennessee if I wasn't at Oklahoma beforehand. So. Okay, on the end, and, uh, Coach Heupel, uh, Aiden Tyler with OU Knightley and Norman. Uh, obviously, you got that long history ties with Oklahoma, and how does it yeah. feel just with those ties to be their first uh, test in the SEC? Yeah, I thought I'd only get one Oklahoma question today, so <laughs> I missed on the over under. Um, <clears throat> uh, Conference games matter. <laughs> Obviously, I'm stating the obvious, right? Road games are extremely difficult. Uh, know what the environment will be like uh, in Norman. Um, but it's a great opportunity, too. That's why you want to coach. That's why you want to play in this league. You get a chance to play on those stages every single Saturday. Okay, Coach, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate it. Good seeing everybody from, uh, from the past. I hope uh, everybody enjoyed their extended long vacation here over the course of the, uh, the summer. Uh, Commissioner, thanks for the, uh, the kind introduction. Uh, he mentioned that last time I got a chance to see him, we were in, uh, in Omaha. And uh, as I was getting ready to, to come here, I uh, got a chance to see Coach Vitello uh, on the, uh, the MLB draft. 
a couple nights ago. Obviously, the All-Star game uh, was here, or is here tonight, and uh, this is the first time I've had an opportunity to talk since uh, I got a chance to go to, uh, to Omaha and watch uh, Simo and, uh, and Blake and, and Coach Vitello bring home a championship to, to Rocky Top. Um, what an unbelievable experience, opportunity to watch the game with uh, Coach Barnes, um, Danny, uh, our athletic director, uh, get a chance to be on the field and celebrate that moment. Uh, really proud of, uh, of what they did, uh, bringing home a national championship to Rocky Top, what Coach Vitello has built there, and have an opportunity to have my son uh, with me and, and really my entire family. So, uh, great night. Uh, you look at the success uh, that our brand, our logo has had recently with baseball, but basketball uh, during the course of the winter. And you look at all the team sports uh, across the board being in uh, postseason play. Uh, I think it really speaks to uh, the trajectory of our, our university, our athletic department, where it's going, but it also speaks to the leadership that we have there. Uh, so fortunate to work with uh, Dan. Danny White, our athletic director, Chancellor Plowman, and President Boyd. Um, they're visionaries. Uh, they give us all the tools to go compete and uh, have created an unbelievable um, uh, experience for our student athletes there on the campus. Uh, the brand is stronger than it's ever been and uh, really excited about where we're at on the football side of it, but where we're going. Uh, as I sit here today, it's hard to believe that uh, this is the fourth year, the fourth time that I've been here at SEC Media Days. And um, I, I look back, so proud of what our staff and our players have built, uh, the connection, uh, the committedness, uh, the care factor that they have for each other in, in the program. Um, you know, 20 wins over, over the last couple of years, uh, top three in the league, uh, the best that it's been uh, in, uh, in 20 years on Rocky Top. As good as it's been, uh, the future is extremely bright, and uh, we're in a race to get where we need to um, extremely quickly. Uh, proud of the, the culture that we've built. I mentioned that a second ago. Um, we got unbelievable players that uh, care about the people around them uh, and uh, attack every single day uh, the right way. And uh, they do it right on the field, uh, they do it right in the meeting room, uh, but they do it right in the classroom uh, as well and in, in our community. Um, you know, as you look at uh, uh, us academically, uh, we've shattered every record uh, over the last three years, have reset that record uh, for fall uh, term GPAs. Uh, I think we had 63 uh, individuals that were recognized by the conference uh, at the end of the, the regular season. And we're fortunate enough to have uh, some of those guys uh, here with us today. Uh, we got three really special individuals uh, that uh, uh, are with us today. Uh, they represent all this good in college football. They represent what it means to be a Vol. Uh, I take great pride in that we could have had a lot of different players uh, come with us here uh, to, to Dallas and uh, have an opportunity to speak with you. Uh, but these three guys have unique stories and um, uh, are, uh, are great ambassadors uh, for the Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, Keenan Peely <clears throat> started over 37 games in his career. Uh, unfortunately, had a season-ending injury uh, week one of last year. Decided to come back for another year of college football. He loved his experience on Rocky Top and uh, is a dynamic playmaker that's poised to have an unbelievable season. Cooper Mays, uh, preseason All-American center, has started for us for four straight years. Uh, it's in his blood to be on Rocky Top. His father played there, his brother played there. Um, it's vitally important to him, and uh, he's a great uh, member of our, our squad, and uh, he's got great understanding of who we are offensively, the ability to communicate, and has great leadership skills as well. Uh, Omari Thomas, is, who is here for uh, his second time, uh, is a four-year starter for us at, at defensive tackle. Uh, he's kind of the mayor inside of our, our locker room. Uh, he uh, uh, is uh, our SEC representative on the NCAA Football Oversight Committee, um, but uh, is vitally important to, to who and what we are as a program. Uh, in our four years there, uh, he's been a great leader uh, every, every single year. Uh, this football team that we have when we embarked on our offseason, when we got back in, in January, it's a unique roster in that uh, we're really experienced at certain spots, in particular on the line of scrimmage, and we have some youth that, 
that surrounds them. The challenge has been that our young guys can't be young when we get to the fall. Uh, the leadership that we have from our veterans, uh, the um, young guys coming in, uh, buying into the culture, competing every single day. Uh, this has been a great group, a great team up until this uh, part of the, the off season, the first three quarters of our off season. They've been unbelievable in, in their work habits, their competitiveness, how they've attacked every single rep every single day. And uh, I cannot wait uh, to get to training camp. Uh, I'm ready to go compete with these guys on the grass. And I know Vol Nation is excited uh, about the season that uh, we're ready to embark upon as well. Uh, it's hard to believe that training camp's uh, right around the corner, less than two weeks. Uh, we're ready to go compete. Uh, we got great renovations that are going on uh, inside of, of Neyland Stadium, one of the great venues in all of, of sports, let alone college football. Uh, our, our fan base is extremely passionate, season ticket waiting list of over 15,000 people, and uh, we'll be ready to go kick off here in a little over a month. So with that, I'm going to open it up to questions. Thank you, Coach. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get Seth, Diego, and Nolan, please again give your name and affiliation uh, before your question. So, Coach, we'll start over here to our left on the second row. Hi, Coach. NickKellyAle.com. Uh, you've got another South Dakota native in the SEC with Kalen DeBoer joining. Yeah. Uh, what's that like to have a South Dakota native on the other side of the third Saturday in October rivalry? Yeah, I'm not sure anybody uh, pictured two South Dakotans being in the, in, in the SEC a few a few years ago. Uh, Kalen's somebody that I've known uh, for a long time. Uh, I was a little bit younger, um, watched him uh, as an athlete, and um, then through our, our coaching paths have uh, have crossed and stayed in uh, in contact at different times. Um, excited to have him in the league. Um, great person, great coach, and uh, you know we'll be ready for uh, for Saturday in October. Coach, we'll go down the center aisle about three quarters of the way back. Coach Billy Jones, George Plaster Show, Nashville, Tennessee. Last year you talked about, as your program progresses, inches become harder to move than miles. I'm curious how you thought your team did in moving those inches. If not, what can you do to do that better this season? Yeah, uh, if I said miles, I'm not sure that miles might have been right. Uh, certainly maybe feet uh, or yards. Um, I'm really proud of, of a lot of what we did uh, last year. Uh, you know, uh, us, you know, finishing uh, New Year's Day Bowl, uh, a win, um, you know, the 20 wins over the last two years, uh, most of the Tennessee's had in, in the last two decades. Uh, at the same time, that's obviously not the standard for, uh, for where we want to get to. Um, but uh, proud of the steps that we, we took. Um, we had some setbacks on some Saturdays, but uh, that's why you get up, line up, and, and go compete every single day to, to go make, be your best. And uh, this group's been fantastic. Uh, I'm really excited about the future of, uh, of who and what we're going to be. When I took this job three years ago, um, everybody can go back and, and kind of research, um, you know, what we were embarked on uh, uh, as far as challenges and, and how we had to navigate those and uh, we're at the point now where we're almost free and clear of navigating all of those things um, our roster is um, you know the deepest that it's been by far and uh, inside of this league that's important as you, as you go through the season uh, I couldn't be more excited about going and lining up with this group this uh, this fall coach will go in the section just in front of you to the right Coach, Emily Grace McWhorter from the next round. You and Coach Halsley are familiar with Oklahoma. Is there anything you're looking forward to, particularly when you travel to Norman this September? Yeah, um, first time that uh, I will have been back. Uh, it will be unique uh, for myself to, to be on the other sideline. Obviously, there's been a lot of Saturdays where I was on the, uh, the home sideline. Um, but uh, there's so many you know, great teammates, uh, friends uh, that will be there. Um, got great uh, respect for uh, for the university the program uh, a lot of friends that are coaching uh, on the opposing sideline that day uh, former teammates that uh, that will be coaching on that that opposing sideline too so uh, it'll be unique to be back there but uh, excited to be there okay we'll go back over here to our left hand side four rows at travis brown kbtx.com what have you liked and not liked about the helmet communicators in your practice time with them <coughs> Practice communication, um, uh, being able to uh, take that to, to game day uh, quickest, 
most efficient, effective way to communicate with somebody uh, on the field. Uh, gives you a, a, a chance to, uh, to solve some of the problems um, in, uh, in an immediate way. Um, I think the thing that uh, the players would say is there's times where they want to turn the, the, the headset off and, and uh, eliminate some of that communication. So I think uh, as coaches, you always got to be uh, smart in, in how much information you're actually giving them. Okay, we'll go down that center aisle again in the section in front of me. Uh, Brandon Ogden, Tyler Morning Telegraph. Coach, uh, the secondaries area where y'all had a lot of turnover, brought in a lot of new guys, including <coughs> Jermaine McCoy. Just what is it you're expecting from him and that group this year? Yeah, expecting those guys to, to play at a championship level. Uh, I love the, uh, the group as far as their length, athleticism, playmaking ability, their willingness to be physical, uh, take on, destruct blocks, tackle in, in open space, um, their care factor, their knowledge and understanding of what we're doing. Uh, how they approach, you know, their practice every single day. Um, I'm really excited about it. Um, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but this is the deepest that uh, that we've been within our roster, and uh, that affords you to have the opportunity to have great competition every single day. That's on the practice field. That's in the meeting room. Uh, but that depth becomes important as you go throughout the course of the season as well. And um, I'm looking forward to to that group taking a, a real step here this fall for us. She'll go here to the far left on the aisle. First James time. Hale, OKC Sports Radio in Oklahoma City. Josh, it's great to see you again. Uh, man, you were a great James, I figured I'd hear from you at some point, man. So <laughs> good to see you. Right, right. Uh, you were a great quarterback at OU, and you've always been good with quarterbacks. Tell us about your latest quarterback, and uh, he was such a highly recruited kid. Yeah, uh, was highly recruited uh, because of his athletic traits. Um, you know, he's got the ability to, to throw the fo football sideline to sideline, vertically down the football field, extremely accurate, um, loose, quick triggered arm. Um, he's got the ability to extend and make plays with his feet. <clears throat> that's as a, a runner that's, you know, evading and, and making a play down the field. Um, the thing that I've loved about Nico is, you know, when he came into the building, uh, he wanted to earn the respect of, of his teammates. And you do that through your actions, not your words. Everybody understands how hard he works to become the best that he can at his craft. Uh, he takes great ownership in, in his skill set and developing it, uh, understanding of our offense. And um, just, uh, you know, as, as a young player, um, gets his first start in the bowl game. One of the best compliments you can give to, to a quarterback is when it goes from the practice field to the game field, it slows down for him. During the course of the bowl game, it slowed down for him. For him. Thought he was in great command out there. Now there's a lot of things that he learned from that game. Uh, he's had great urgency in his preparation all offseason. I'm really excited to see his growth and development as a young quarterback throughout the course of this 24-hour journey. Okay, we'll go right in front of me, the second row, Barry. Barry Trammell with the Tulsa World. Hey, Josh, can you, can you reflect on 25 years now since you came to Norman? Uh, you're going back to Norman in September. Guy that came in with you, Brent's the head coach on the other side. Yeah. Oh, you've joined the league that you've established yourself in. Just the crazy, the crazy nature of your journey as it relates to Oklahoma. Barry, I feel like only you could have predicted that all these things would have happened uh, 25 years ago. You know what I mean? As the grand wizard of, of uh, Oklahoma media. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> you know, Coach Leach r recruits me. Uh, Brent, I got great respect for, for Brent. Um, you know, playing while he was coaching, but also being beside him uh, in the staff room. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't, know that I ever forecasted they were coming into this league, uh, Oklahoma. Um, it's just uh, those are two really good brands uh, coming in. Uh, obviously, Oklahoma, my experience there. Uh, I think it's an exciting time to be in this league and um, really unique that uh, I'll have an opportunity to go back to, to Oklahoma. It'll be a, a completely different viewpoint <laughs> that Saturday afternoon or evening, whenever the game is. Um, but um, it'll be unique for me. Uh, I got family that still lives back there. Um, a lot of friends, teammates, um, you know, still, you know, coaches that I stay in contact that, that coached me while I was there and obviously administration too. So it'll be a unique Saturday. She'll go stay in this section in front of me over here on the left aisle. 
Connor O'Gara, Saturday Down South. Uh, Josh, why did you ultimately not bring Nico Yamaleava here? Man, it's not about why I didn't bring Nico. It's about why uh, the three guys that I talked about earlier are here. And these are guys that are in six year plus um, that uh, uh, have unique stories and, and are great ambassadors, but great leaders inside of our, our program. And um, felt like, you know, in our track record, my track record of who we've brought here, um, we've brought veteran guys. And, and uh, so it's not about Nico, it's about, you know, these three guys, why we made that choice. Okay, we'll stay in the same section on the right out. Hey, Coach, Chris Phillips, SEC Unfilter. Chris Brazel's a guy who's gotten a lot of hype this offseason, the two-lane transfer. Just talk about what makes you so excited about him and then the rest of that wide receiver group, the luxury it is to help a young quarterback with some of the talent you've got in that room. It's always a luxury as a quarterback to have guys that have the ability to separate, create bigger windows, to have length to go up and attack the football, have the skill set to defeat press at the, at the line of scrimmage, let you get the ball out of your hands, uh, not sit back there and take a bunch of hits. Uh, Chris is somebody that uh, has got a, a, lot of, a lot of talk about because of what he's done on the field. Uh, been a great teammate, but uh, he's been a dynamic playmaker uh, up until this point as we went through uh, spring ball. And um, <clears throat> his best is still coming. Uh, he's continued to grow and mature physically. Just his strength, explosiveness, uh, size to his frame, what he's done you know, since he got there in January. Really excited about him and, and looking forward to having a great training camp with him. Pitch will go over to our right-hand side, about three-quarters of the way back. Yeah, Dean, Dean Blevins, News 9, Oklahoma City. Um, Josh, back on Nico, it sounds like the learning curve that you're expecting that, to, that him to hit the ground running and uh, it's not going to be any wait till midseason to, to gain your form. Is that accurate? Well, I should certainly hope not. You know what I mean? We want him to hit the ground running. Um, <clears throat> he's a young quarterback, um, <clears throat> played really well in the bowl game. Um, he's going to continue to grow through all of his experiences here throughout the course of the season. He's only going to continue to get better from all of those. But we expect him to play at a, at a really high level uh, from the very beginning, and we need that from him. Okay, we'll go in the center aisle, straight down the aisle, right there in the center. Hey, Josh, Trey Wallace with OutKick. Uh, the relationship with Tony Vitello and how you've been able to use the baseball program to kind of cross-recruit with football, what has that been like for the last three years, and how have you used Vitello uh, to maybe land a few players on y'all's roster? Uh, you know, at times there, there's baseball football guys that, uh, that you're recruiting, so having a, a clear dialogue with him I think is really important, him and his staff. But I think one of the great things, when it's going good, it's going good all year long as far as your logo being in front of, of recruits. And so what Coach Vitello has done on the baseball side of it or Coach Barnes has done on the basketball side of it, those are great experiences for recruits when they come to campus. Uh, they get a, a, a small taste of, of what Vol Nation is like and what game days are going to be like in front of 102,000 inside of Neyland Stadium. Okay, we'll go over to our right, Coach, on the near over to the right side. Hey, Coach, uh, Steve Moulton, WZZN out of Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, I, I did want to ask about building a program, and you've done it at a couple of places. that was Central Florida and now at Tennessee. With the portal and all the portal that entails, is it easier, harder to build a program how you'd like to? Well, I think you know, the, the portal um, has positives and negatives within your own roster, right? You, you lose some, you gain some. Uh, the portal gives you the ability to go patch holes on your roster quicker than it could happen just through general high school recruiting. Uh, it's a little bit like junior college recruiting used to be uh, where you had immediate needs and had to patch your roster. Going to the center aisle, about three quarters of the way back, right in front of the camera. Hey, Coach, Rick Butler with Rocky Top Insider. Can you just talk about the impact of your two new assistant coaches with Inge and uh, Sims heading into this fall, which is what they've been able to do in the spring and summer so far? Yeah, um, 
two guys that are elite teachers, um, that are relationship driven, <clears throat> their ability to gain trust from the players inside of their position rooms as quickly as they did, uh, parlayed itself into uh, both of those position groups having great springs. And uh, they've had great summers too, but just the on-field experiences, you know, our linebackers, I thought, uh, played with great eyes, uh, alignment assignment, uh, their communication, their ability to destruct blocks. Uh, they were playing their best football as a group uh, that, uh, that they had since we've been there. And uh, Coach Sims has done an unbelievable job with the running back. Uh, it's a young group uh, outside of Dylan Sampson uh, that uh, have really grown in their understanding and their football IQ. Uh, really excited to see him continue to develop that group here as we get into training camp. Coach, we'll go into the section in front of my table on the far left aisle, three quarters of the way back. Yeah, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Uh, you just mentioned Dylan Sampson. What kind of role do you expect for him to have this year? Maybe an increased opportunities for him? Yeah, he will have uh, increased opportunities. Um, he's a guy from the moment that he got there, had great feel, pace, and vision. Uh, he's done a great job with the ball in his hands and out, out of his hands. Uh, he's become a really good pass protector. Uh, he's got the ability to help you in your return game as well. Um, after his freshman year, uh, his ability to impact his teammates. Uh, Dylan's one of the strongest leaders that we have inside of our, our locker room. Just a, a dynamic personality that uh, is, isn't afraid um, to, to call on his teammates and, and make sure that they're meeting the standards. He's uh, going to have a great year for us. We'll go back over to the left-hand side in the orange. Uh, hey, Coach, uh, Bruce Marshall from WHPQ in Memphis. A so schedule question for you. Two years ago, you had that game at Pitt that I really thought kick-started you guys early in the season. And, and last year, you didn't really have one of those away at the game in Nashville last year at the opener. But this year, you got that NC State game in Charlotte, the second game. How important is that for you to get a game like that, a tough non-conference game early, do you think that can serve the same purpose as that pit game did two years ago? Yeah, every se season's different. Um, I'm not sure you want to necessarily go into overtime uh, to, to kickstart your season, uh, but uh, it certainly helped. Uh, NC State's a um, really good program. Uh, Coach Dorn's done a, done a, a really, really good job there. Uh, they're a really good football team. Uh, that'll be a, a big time matchup uh, Saturday evening over there in, uh, in Charlotte. If you have a question, we have time for one or two more. You raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. All the way up at the front. Guys, if we could get all the way up the front. Get one right in the front row. Hey, Josh, Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat. It's been a few years since you've been to Fayetteville. They're on the schedule this year. Just your thoughts about preparing for that game. Yeah, uh, always a great venue. Um, fan base is uh, extremely passionate and, um, you know, early uh, conference game on the road. Know that uh, that will be a big test when we get to that Saturday. We'll go right behind the second row, Jen. Hey, Josh, Jen and Carl, someone with the on the box score. NIL become a bad word for a lot of college football fans. But can you talk a little bit about the positives for your guys, just some of those personal stories that you've seen and the differences that it's made? Yeah, I wish I had it when I was uh, back in Oklahoma playing, you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> I think, um, you know, for our players, uh, in their lives, with their family. It's afforded them uh, opportunities, and um, um, I think uh, that's important. I, I, go, I do truly go back to my playing days and, and feel like, you know, you wanted to be a, a part of it and have an opportunity to, uh, to use the game in a positive way uh, for your family as well. And, and so uh, for our guys, uh, being able to increase their brand, um, their notoriety, and um, uh, also be taking take care of their families is, uh, is a real positive. Okay, we'll take one final question over to our right, about three quarters of the way back. Yeah, Coach, uh, Ron Brown with SEC Sideline Sports Network in Memphis. The, it's always darkest before dawn. We hear college football's ruining NIL, the portal, and everything. And here's Tennessee all of a sudden brought in 62 million in donations last year. Uh, it's pretty much idiot-proof college football. Uh, 
season ticket sales. What do you tell people that keep trying to kill the game? Uh, this is the great, greatest game. To, to me, this is the greatest game that there is. Um, you look at um, the experience that young people have from 18 to 22, 23 years old, uh, their growth as a man, and um, in the, in the game affords that. Uh, you learn how to set goals. You learn how to handle success. You learn how to handle failure. Uh, you learn how to lead. Um, you learn how to get yourself ready to be the husband, uh, the father that you want to be when, uh, when football ends, and it ends for everybody someday. Um, there's a lot of obstacles within the landscape of college football in today's world that we got to navigate, but there's a lot of really smart people that can help us navigate it the right way, and uh, I'm excited about the future of football. Thank you. Coach Heibel, thank you for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you all.